Thank you, Peter. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome here at the conference. Um, it's Ben Martin, um, founder of Steel River Crop Solutions, and I want to give you some more information on the return on investment in indoor farming. What does it mean and what are the points we have to focus on? Let me first start with a few words on urban crops. We're a Belgian company founded in 2014, and we do not operate indoor vertical farms. We build them. And we do this as an end-to-end -end solution provider. So we want to help our clients through their entire journey from feasibility analysis, deployment, recipe development, until delivery and support afterwards. And for the last six years, we've been doing what everyone does. Um, we've been doing research on crops, investigating the interactions of uh, the different aspects that have been mentioned in previous presentations. And that has resulted that we have over 220 plant grown recipes today. And we have sold um, 25 container farms globally. And um, that's actually also where our expertise lies. So in these crossroads between plant biology and engineering. Now, we all know the issues of indoor farming, right? And well, the story is true, right? It's real, the message. And it has sustainable, sustainability advantages. We also can get healthy and tasty crops year round every single day of the year. But vertical farming is expensive. Okay. Although the biology works, uh, go into any retail store in your city, have a look at, at the fresh um, department, and you can get uh, goods flown in in middle of winter from Kenya, from Israel, also 365 days a year, right? And they're not that expensive. So the real competition for indoor vertical farming is actually open field and greenhouse agriculture. And if we then look at these greenhouses and open fields, well, they've been linked to and are entangled in such optimal supply chains, which have been improving over decades, right? Here in this picture on the slide on the right, you see an indoor vertical farm fully automated facility that we built at our headquarters over four years ago. Construction price of such a facility today, 2,750 euros per square meter. A state-of-the-art high-end greenhouse, 700 euros per square meter. That excludes land, but hey, which farmer looks at their cost of land, right? They're all cash businesses. They look at cash in and cash out. They don't take this into account. And also, why would you pay for electricity in your farm and sell it for free? It's a real valid question. And then you have the risks. Right. I've been talking with a cucumber grower it was a year ago and it was about pests and diseases. And there are certain there are certain diseases, once they enter the greenhouse, it takes almost a year to get out to combat it actually to get it out of there. But if you have an indoor vertical farm and you have this large room full of plants in every stage of growth, and a disease or a pest enters that, well, you have a downtime of what, six weeks, eight weeks? So Looking at indoor farming, you have a huge initial investment. And characteristic to the industry of growing produce, you have operational risks, which you just almost cannot get rid of. So the economics, well, they're still not actually there, right? Now, let me give you some examples of what it looks like today. And for our clients, from the experience we have, I cannot compare all systems in the world, but I do, can share with you the data that we have available. And the first example is for romaine lettuce produced in a container farm. And on this picture, you see a first generation container farm um, that a client in Arkansas is using. It's called Fat Veggies. They're US Army veterans that produce lettuces and they sell them at a premium in local farmers markets, right? A premium, of course, to cover the costs. And this first generation indoor vertical farm is actually based on a gully or NFT system, right? where you put young plants in on one layer here on the bottom, they move automatically to the back and the full plants come out in the front again when they're ready for harvest. Now, such an indoor farm, and this slide has a lot of numbers, but I just want to want to share it with you and it will be made available later as well. Such a farm for this romaine lettuce of 100 grams has 69 square meters of growth surface and yields 68 kilograms per square meter per year, right? And that's net yield, because that's the only yield that matters that gives you value. You have to remove some bottom leaves, some yellow leaves, and that's what you can sell. 
Now, you have a certain output per year, you have your cost, 2,000 euros per square meter, and we made some assumptions regarding the operational cost. So 20 euros per hour for low scale, and you can see everything else. But what's really interesting is here, the, the green rectangle on the bottom, the full unit production cost per kilogram, and that includes depreciation on 10 years. We're looking at 11.2 euros, which is a lot, right? But what are the main components here? Our capital expenditure is 30%. Our labor is over 40%. And then at least immediately we see the two most important items for improvement in the North Farming, right? That's what we have to focus on. Maybe surprising to some of you, electricity is only 8% of the full unit production cost. Now, if we then look at the rest of the world, what does this mean? And if you're in Belgium or Netherlands or by extension, Western Europe, in retail, a head of lettuce is what, five euros per kilogram tops. If you go East Coast US, like New York, where the salad is transported from the salad bowl in California or from Mexico, we're looking at 22 euros per kilogram and Asia even a bit more. Now, these are retail prices. Wholesale, you can divide those by half, if not more. So is it profitable? You won't be making money, right? Now, the second example I would like to share is Ginovisi Basil. You already saw some of the, of the data presented just before this one, but the full unit production cost in that first generation container farm with the same assumptions in operational cost is 19 euros per kilogram. Now, if then we look at clamshell retail prices, well, we have way higher prices compared to that lattice of before. Now, then you see why also basil is one of the most popular crops in indoor vertical farming. It makes sense, right? But the conclusion is the same. Indoor vertical farming is only competitive today in niche markets. And you can have niche markets geographically, right? Like the Northern Hemisphere, where you have Scandinavia, Canada, and cold winters, and days with very little sunlight, where even greenhouse production is very expensive. Right? They have to heat, they have to add additional light, and so on. Recently, we've also sold the system to Tahiti, where it's also a niche market. It's also difficult to grow climatologically, but you have their high-end hotels, you have tourists with a lot of spending power, and when they come there, well, they want to eat what they can eat at home, right? So everything is important. So you can make a business case. Middle East, similar story, right? It's very difficult, not just economically, but technically to cool a greenhouse over there. So you need to look at other technologies. Now, another aspect of niche markets, right, geographically, is also in a value chain model. This year, one of our units at a parking lot of IKEA in Sweden, and you all know IKEA, right? It's a company also driven by sustainability, putting a lot of attention to that. And they're trying to optimize their supply chain instead of importing their lettuces from thousands of kilometers away to produce them locally, total distance of supply chain, 50 meters, right? On top of that, well, they put a window in this farm. They can have let families with their children go and have a look. Children see these plants growing. It's experience, right? An experience you cannot get on Amazon.com, but still niche market. Now, how can we improve this food and production cost? I mentioned already capital expenditure, right? Lower the capex per square meter of growth surface, or put as much growth surface as you can in your growing facility. Secondly, operational cost, where labor is the biggest one. And thirdly, yield. Because yield really works on every single line of your profit and loss statements, right? So, last month, we've launched a system called the Modulex Plant Factory. Now you see an image here. It's a system based on bench irrigation, so ebb and flow irrigation, in which you can grow multiple plants, uh, lettuces, microgreens, herbs, and so on. And we've maximized the growth surface in this facility. And we've introduced a concept which been, has been running in our heads already for a while, which is called the bench carousel system where you have benches on chains which rotate basically in endless loops. Now, this bench carousel system 
has a huge advantage. Every single bench comes to the operator within 90 seconds. So operators don't need to walk in between, they don't lose time just walking to their produce and then to their processing areas. The growth surface has been increased with 25%. And basically in such a grow module, as you can see here, right, you have two of these bench carousels on top of each other, which rotate in which you can grow then the crop of your choosing. Now, in a commercial system, you can combine multiple of these grow modules with their bench carousels to a centralized operational area. And I fear a very small flight through video. The advantage is that as you have your growth module separate, you also separate your risks of pests and diseases. If something happens in one module, it will not spread to the rest. While you keep economies of scale by centralizing your operations, right? And as the rolling doors of the growth modules are opening, you see the four growth layers on top of each other with the two bench carousel systems. Great. It's innovation. But what does it mean for your bottom line? And I'll go back to the lettuce example. So we have the same romaine lettuce with the same yield per square meter per year, but now of course in a system with more growth surface with a lower capex per square meter. We took the exact same assumptions in operational costs. And what do we see? The food unit production cost went down from 11.2 euros per kilogram to 8.7 euros per kilogram. Still high, but a 23% improvement is an improvement. Now, let's have a look at herbs. If we had a first generation farm where we're growing in gullies, and the herb often grows vertically, right? While the lettuce also grows, di grows diagonally. So if you grow these herbs in these gullies, there's a lot of unused space. And whether this gully is placed horizontally or vertically, it's the same story. Now, if you grow them in benches, we can place these herbs in chest panels maximize the usable growth surface. And if you translate that then to the numbers, you not only have the increase you have in square meters, but also the increase in yield because of the improvement in planting density. So instead of 40 kilograms per square meter per year in the first generation farm, you now go up to 64 kilograms per square meter per year. For your bottom line, you have an improvement of 50% in full unit production cost. Now, most industries, they jump in the air when they see 5% improvements in full unit production costs, right? This is really a step change. But what's next? And that's the question. We have to keep on improving. Yeah? On the capital expenditure, technologies are evolving. You might not see the use increases, for example, in LED efficiency, but as you scale, as your business and, product and projects become bigger, economies will be there, industry will come. But the real change, the real change will happen in plant biology, right? Seed genetics, breeding, most breeders are already working on indoor, in indoor rooms. We even had the huge amount, announcement three months ago, I guess it was, of Bayer in a joint venture with Temasek, and the new company Unfold, which has only one purpose and is focusing on breeding for indoor farm. That's the only thing that company does. And that's, in my opinion, where the next step change will be, where the next improvements for return on investments welcome thank you very much everyone and if you have any questions please shoot